Well, I think you should start. You are, <laughs> <laughs> or, or who, who is longer with musical fidelity? You or me? The whole thing was started by Anthony Michelson back in the 19, late 1970s, I think it was. He put together something on his kitchen, pretty much a breadboard design, literally, and uh, made some amplifiers and put them in a local shop where they sold like hot cakes. The circuitry for the time, I've seen it myself, was, was, it was classic data sheet stuff. He, he made lots of products, a valve based, which back in the day was very strange because valves were pretty much considered dead and archaic to say the least. Just a very, very minor hardcore of fans who still like their sound. He went on with that and he also tried to take this over into the semiconductor. He did ranges like the X series, uh, which uh, started out as a tubular shape for his DAC, a standalone DAC, which was another first in the industry. The range was then extended because these, in these tubes it was impossible to fit a CD into it, so we, <laughs> we stretched it out a bit and made these lozenge-shaped uh, X-series, which he could then also do a bigger power amplifier in. And I came in as a helper to, to help out with, generally with computer stuff, which is what I've been spent spending my whole time doing before and then I remember we did the CD pre as well I remember doing about 10 boards for those in a couple of weeks and then we had a, a choke regulated power supply on the other side which was another of Anthony's uh, favorite uh, things was the choke regulated power supply we had these specially wound dual uh, dual winding chokes which you couldn't get away with if you just did them in a single supply, but because they were in opposing phase, you could actually wind a choke for a smaller amount of um, effect and it would still have the same effect with the same, same uh, components. So that, that actually helped with the rec regulation, line regulation before you even went into regulators and, and gave us a good sound as well. We did the A3.2 and the A3.5. We went through various permutations. We went into the AMS, Class A series, uh, which was also 50 and 100 watts, and we did a massive 100 watt Class A amplifier, which was about 97 kilos, if I recall <laughs> correctly. After that, we started doing some more CD players. We started going back to basics and um, trying to trying to refine the market. Really, after all these extravagant items we'd done. Oh, and, you did also the Titan, then. and we did the Titan as well. Yes, this came out just after the AMS. This this was a sort of refinding the range, as it were. The Titan was a sort of new Vista rehash, as it were. But we looked at it and we saw how we could we could redo it. But with the Titans, we was the first exploration into actually producing a, an amplifier which had its own bulk capacitance next to each tra output transistor, which made it which means that effectively there was a, a, an immediate store of energy. Um, in the output stage, not somewhere away behind some wires or whatever in the power supply, but actually right next to each transistor. So that if it needs to pull a sudden amount of cu current to, to, to drive the speaker, they're readily available. But it's for not it to... for the M series, it's not the same, similar? For it's... the M series, yes, the, but the power supplies were, were, were generously rated. So, mm -hmm. so they, were, they were generously rated and it, it got away with the same thing. But with the Titan, you could definitely you could drive some really low loads yeah. with the... I mean, the, 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 the rest of the, the product ranges we tested down to about one, one ohm or so, or so mm -hmm. but with the Titan, you could almost go down to half an ohm or less, you know, just yeah. some short circuits. Very carefully. How much Titan is in the Novista then actually? Oh absolutely, a lot of it because it is my favorite way of building a power amplifier. Uh, to have this like a V8 engine is, is you know, to have the, the, the power there right at it, it's, it's on its doorstep uh, to, to draw uh, immediately rather than through a, a whole load of wires or PCB traces. Um, I think is, is, is a much better way to build a power amplifier and it also helps if I then use also a choke in the choke regulation. I now have my capacitors and power supply separate, separated from the main power amplifier, which also reduces any power supply hum or, or ripple, especially at higher So currents. we have chokes again in the new Vista? In the new Vista, we have chokes, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yes, in all of them, from the preamplifier uh, through to the power amplifiers as well, both have chokes. Um, they have slightly different chokes in there to deal with the slightly different currents, but yes, mm -hmm. other than that, they're identical. As I started to open up my, my distribution company, definitely I was then meeting uh, Anthony Michelson 
uh, and he was uh, trusting me from the first day. And so I had a magic combination, uh, especially with the, uh, at that time with the A1, which was a pure class A amplifier, 20 watt, but it was just the perfect product uh, to give people a really uh, high-end sound for a relatively uh, small amount of money. And that's also the slogan of Musical Fidelity. Yeah? So we are there to make high-end affordable. Mm -hmm. It's not high fidelity, it's musical fidelity. It's not high fidelity, it's musical fidelity, yeah. You're very right.